Beloved, as you all are coming back online, my apologies for the te technical difficulties this e this evening. Some of you know I'm not the most technical person, but then I got on and then something was going on with my camera or something. But um, thank you for logging back in to the to the broadcast this evening. <clears throat> Amen. Give another minute or two to allow a few more folks to jump in here. So as folk are coming in, I want to I want to invoke the prayers of the saints. Once again, on behalf of the Mosley Sanford Johnson family, um, just recently found out earlier today about the passing of Brother Lowell Anthony Washington, who is the son of AJ, um, who we laid to rest right around. And that is the second death in a span of five days for this family. As we know, when you're talking about Mosley's and Sanford's, you're talking about one family. So, beloved, I, I invoke the prayers of the saints to flank this family with your prayers as they go through this season of loss and and discouragement. We pray God will just fall on them afresh. At the same time, we're also lifting up the Stevenson family, um, Patton family, the nephew of, of our own Tanya Carter, um, was also found earlier today. He was the son of her brother, um, I believe his name is Boo Carter. And we want to keep that family lifted um, as they are also suffering from the loss of a loved one today. I told you all a long time ago that I felt like we were in a season, <clears throat> a season of bereavement. Um, as we've been going through this quarantine, it has touched all of us. It has touched all of us in many ways. Death has touched all of us. Death has been close with all of us and was really seeking the Lord on where to go in this next series of study. At one time I was seeking a possible study on, on vengeance. But as I was in the last series of who am I the Lord kind of led me in a different direction and I was really looking at grief and thought he was leading me towards a series on grief, but it kind of is, but it kind of is not um, because yes, we're going through pain. Yes, we're dealing with a lot. Yes, we're, seems like we're in the middle of a storm that seems like to have no end at this point or we still can't see the end in sight but what the spirit was reminding me of was that <clears throat> a lot of what we're going through um i don't want to say that we're to blame or that we deserve it but at the same time god is justified um, I, I couldn't get over that, that God is justified. All the hell, all the hurt, all the hatred, um, all the pain, all the suffering. 
God is justified. Um, so with that thought, um, the Spirit of God actually led me to to do a study on the book of Lamentations. To do a study on the book of Lamentations and um, for you Bible readers, we you know that uh, Lamentations is a book that was penned by one who is called the Weeping Prophet in the prophet Jeremiah for how he weeped for Jerusalem, how he weeped for God's church. So we're going to embark upon this series of study. And those of you who have been attending my Bible study for some time, you know I don't really never know how long um, these series will last. We're just going to go until the Lord says that's enough, or until he's through talking, and until he's through pouring into us through his word. So right now, if you would now <clears throat> bow with me in a word of prayer as we ask God to for his spirit to not only be with us as we walk through this series, but that he will breathe upon it and that it will be made alive for us and that it will be food for our souls and that it will enrich our spirits. Let us pray. Gracious and all wise God, Lord, how we thank you tonight. How we thank you for your love. How we thank you for your mercy. How we thank you for your eternal grace and favor. Lord, we recognize you as Lord over our lives and Lord over our circumstances. And we come to you now as your humble people, thanking you for this yet another, another opportunity to rightly divide the word of truth. Master, I for one give you glory and give you, give you thanksgiving for this, season, this series of study that we are about to embark upon. I pray, Lord, that you will show us life in the pages of scripture. I pray, Lord, that you will give us understanding of how you deal with your people. So, Master, I'm thanking you in advance for what you are about to do. And I pray, Lord, that it is all pleasing in your sight and that it will be good for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> the book of Lamentations, and tonight we're not going to really dive into, um, into the text, but I just want to give a little bit of background an introduction into the text and my concerns as a preacher, as a pastor, um, and just simply as a child of God, and why I think and feel that the Spirit of God has led me to this lesson, to this particular lesson. Um, in this, in this book, the prophet Jeremiah, is, it's, it's obvious, it's obvious from the first couple of verses in the text that Isaiah is grieving, and I, I mean grieving from his heart over the state of God's church, over the state of God's church. The city, yes, the city of Jerusalem, which was the holy city, and it was the city that where the temple of God, which um, represented the very presence and essence of God. It's where you had the 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 inner part of the temple where you had the holies and the holies of holies um, that had the the ark of the covenant and so on. Um, and so, yes, he, he, he lamented over the destruction of the city, yes. He lamented over the destruction of the temple, absolutely. But, but make no mistake about it, this is about God's people. This is about God's people. And, um, beloved, we, as the people of God, we, we, 
we have to get to a place in our maturation that goes beyond the basic knowledge of our salvation. I need you to hear me good. Um, Paul talked about how we must grow from the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We, we must increase beyond that point. Um, he said in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1, he said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. As he was speaking of these things, he was talking about, yes, having the knowledge of your salvation. Yes, the faith and belief, the believing faith and knowledge that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Um, he, 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 he died on Calvary's cross for my sins. He was my mediator. He was my scapegoat. He was the, the, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And he rose on that third appointed morning. Yes, that, that is all well and good, but we've got to get beyond that. We, as believers, as, as children, as disciples, as followers, We've got to grow beyond that. We, we've got to obtain a greater knowledge, a greater understanding of not only who God is, but, and not only of his expectations of us, but also how he deals with us. we got to develop a better understanding because how God, if we understand how God deals with us, then maybe there will be a higher level of repentance and order. I um, let me let me first get this out because, beloved, I uh, I, I think it's imperative for the believer to truly understand that our God is a sovereign God. God is a sovereign God. What do I mean by that? What do I mean he's sovereign? What I mean by, by saying he is sovereign, to put it very simply, it means that God does what he wants to do, when he wants to, with whom he wants to, with whomever he wants to do it to, how he wants to, for as long as he wants to, with complete autonomy, meaning, in other words, he doesn't answer or ask for permission from no one. He has complete autonomy to do it. And nothing can prevent him from doing it. Nothing can stay his hand from doing whatever he has decreed to do or allow or to come to pass. God is sovereign. He is completely sovereign. And in addition to him being sovereign, God is also holy. He's also holy. In, 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 in other words, what I'm saying is, is not only does he have complete autonomy and power to do what he wants, how he wants, when he wants, with whom he wants, and how he wants, but whatever he decides to do, it's always right and good. I need you to let that sink in for a moment. I know that sounds good on the surface, but I need you to understand that that even includes the, the, the seasons of our life that are painful. That includes the, the, the circumstances around us that cause us confusion, that cause us hurt, that cause us to suffer. Um, God in allowing those periods in our, in our lives, not only is he justified in doing it, but he's right and he's good. 
I, I need you to let that sink in. I, I need you to grasp that concept that God is sovereignly holy. He's sovereignly holy. He, whatever he decides, it can't be wrong and it can never be bad or with bad intentions. What God does can't be judged on whether it's right or wrong. He can't be judged on whether it's good or bad. Because if God did it, it is inherently by nature good. It is inherently by nature right. Because it's God. I need you to let that sink in. Because the thing is, we got to understand. We got to understand. If, if we say that God is omnipotent, that God is omniscient, and God is omnipresent, if we sit, talk about these three attributes of God, then we must also understand that God controls everything. He rules everything. He has all power over everything. And then comes his sovereignty with those attributes. So that means even when Satan is attacking my life, even when my enemies seem to be getting the best of me, you know what? God allowed it. If he didn't de even decree it. <coughs> if he didn't decree it, he allowed it. Either way, whatever his intentions are on either decreeing it or allowing it, it's not only right, but it's good. Help me, Holy Spirit. I need you to let this sink in. Because, see, one of the realities... <coughs> One of the realities of the book of Lamentations is the author understood that God was justified in everything that he allowed to befall the people of Israel. Because this, this, this was written after the destruction of Jerusalem, after the destruction of the temple, and, 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 and they have gone into exile to the people of Babylon. This is after all of that. And Jeremiah... It is, even though he's hurting and he's grieving what has occurred, he understands that God was justified in his dealing with his own people, with his own church, because of the sinfulness and disobedience of his people. But yet, the people did not understand it. The people could not understand this. The people were confused by this. Jeremiah wasn't confused. No, no, no. So, 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 beloved, for me, <clears throat> if you all have really been listening to me and you, if you've been listening to my, my teachings and to my message, I, I, I've expressed to you all before, um, I believe that God's calling in my ministry is to expose to expose the lies and the faulty walls and, and ideologies of religion Christianity um, and knock down those walls of division of judgment and to teach and preach the free gospel of God's grace to all that have ears to hear. But in doing so, my heart grieves for the church. And, 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 and you know, I, um, <clears throat> I understand a lot of, a lot of pastors and and preachers, and, and I hope y'all don't mind me kind of getting into this in my intro today, but tonight, but 
a lot of pastors and preachers, I, I understand, a lot of their focus is on a lot of, you know, um, you know, they want to have all these programs and they want to have all of these outreach type ministries and, and all of the, and, and, and don't get me wrong, beloved, I, 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 I pray that God will one day give us greater liberty, a platform to where we can do ministry and outreach on such a level that it'll blow our minds. I, I want that. However, not at the expense of turning a blind eye to doctrine, to the authority of the scriptures, and to God's order. Because because of those three things, doctrine, authority of the scriptures, and God's order, I grieve for the church tonight. I, I grieve for the church. My, 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 to me it's more important for the people, even, even though all that stuff with ministry is so great and wonderful and necessary as the body of Christ, it's necessary. It's even more, more necessary for the people of God to understand the God they serve and to serve them, serve him in a manner that represents him well because we are ambassadors of Christ and we are to show people something different. What good is it for me to feed the hungry? If I can't show them something different, what good is it for me to clothe the naked if I can't show them something different? I can't clothe you and claim to be the church and claim to be a child of God and yet I'm a whoremonger. Or I'm a thief and a liar. I'm a hater and I spew poison out on people. How? How? I just, I'm just asking a question. It's, it's more important for us to have order, doctrine, and to maintain the authority of the scripture. That's important. We cannot lose the importance of that. And when I look at the things that we've been suffering, especially in this past year, with so much death all around us, so much hurt, so much pain, so much confusion, depression, intolerance, disappointment. It, 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 it seems like so much has just been compounded in the last year. And maybe it's just me. Maybe nobody else is feeling like that. But I had my why moment. I had my why moment, and and, and I and I think I, I I've said it once before. With the, during this time, I believe it comes down to the church. I really do. I believe it comes down to the church. God don't just don't do nothing. He just don't do things for no reason. God always has a reason, and and, and in the end. God said that all things work for the good of those who what? Who love the Lord. So, so, so if we got to suffer through this thing, then whatever our suffering is for, it's going to be for the good of his church. It's going to be for the good of his church. So I look at it and I, I, I look at the church and, and, I look at how we, I look at so much disorder within the church, within the family and household. It's so much disorder. And I don't care what you say. I don't care what you accept. I don't care what you think is okay. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. You, sir, who won't take care of your children, 
You're just running around here having babies. You're not in the household with your children. You're not playing a major role in bringing up your children, taking care of your wife. You, sir, are worse than an infidel. God is not pleased with that. God is not pleased with me and not being present in the family. And many of them go to church. God ain't pleased with that. Men aren't in the rightful place in their households as being the heads and leads of their households. And, and, and we wonder why women or trying to rise up and take the place of husbands. It's disorder. And it's the same thing going on in the church. It's the same thing going on in the church. Because men have taken such advantage of the church, of the bride of Christ, like he's some king or some God's gift or like he's a star in, God, in God's program and that he is entitled to use her up, to rape her, to leave her for dead, to leave her destitute. God ain't pleased with that. That's disorder. And you wonder why women rising up talking about they pastors. The same reason they rising up in their households, talking about they head of their households, wanting to walk their daughters down the aisle. Like they're their covering. Beloved, it's disorder. It's disorder. And it starts with the man. God ain't pleased with none of that. He's not pleased with none of it. Beloved, the people of Israel, Jeremiah told them, he told them way back, <clears throat> I'm reminded in, uh, in Jeremiah chapter, chapter 27, he was telling them, if you go back and read it in your leisure, because you kind of got to read like 17, 18 verses of that, I'm not going to read that. But in Jeremiah 27 is where he was telling them that they needed to they needed to submit to Babylonian rule. The people, he was telling the people, he was telling the leaders, you all need to submit to Babylonian rule. And he said you need to do that to avoid further bloodshed, to avoid further destruction. And it was because of their sinfulness. The biggest, the major problem that God had with his people was when they turned to other gods. When they turned to other gods and when they got out of order. That's what it was. That's what it was. That was God's biggest disappointment with his people. And because of that, God dealt with them as he saw fit. He dealt with them as he saw fit and he was fully justified. Beloved, in, 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 in all the things... In all the things that we did that we deal with tragedy God is justified for our pain he's justified in it we can't continue to just operate out of order and, and, and you know that's, that's why I don't just go along to get it y'all don't have a pastor who you know I, I don't care about who likes me I really don't I don't care if I got to stand by myself I don't care who agrees with me because I know I stand on the scriptures. 
So I don't care who talks about me because I won't preach a woman or license a woman. I don't care who talks about me because I go by the title elder. I don't care who, who talks about those certain things because I preach a doctrine of grace and, and a, a, a doctrine of limited atonement and a doctrine of sovereignty and election. I don't care who does not like that. Because I'm not going to go along to get along. There's just some things I'm not going to stand for. No, I will not. I will not marry a homosexual couple. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. And hey, I ain't got no problem if they want to spend the rest of their lives with each other. But let's call it, you know, a civil union. Okay. But marriage is instituted by God for the procreation to be fruitful and to multiply. That's not possible in a homosexual relationship. And it's, I'm not putting them down or condemning them because you y'all know me. I don't condemn homosexuality no more than I than I condemn fornication, adultery, thieving, or robbery. It's all the same to me. But just like I don't call those things right, I'm not going to call homosexuality right. But at the same time, are we just supposed to accept some stuff? How is the church going to be okay with gay pastors? I'm sorry. God is not pleased with certain things. The thing is, if a pastor is committing adultery against his wife, he needs to sit his butt down. If a deacon is fornicating and committing adultery with his wife, he needs to sit his butt down. So if you are living publicly out of order in your home, whether you're, whether you're committing adultery, whether you're a thief, or whether you're a homosexual, you need to sit your butt down. That's just the way it is. When we are operating out of order and then God delivers judgment or he allows something to happen in our lives to sit us down, to get our attention, make us look up to the hills and turn to him. And then we want to say, oh God, why? My heart yearns for the church because, beloved, we will never accomplish what we are to be in our calling to be the church, to go ye therefore. We will never fulfill that if we can't begin to look like Christ. Loving people and maintaining God's order. Order matters. Order matters. I remember I had a couple. I was I was uh I was counseling them, premarital counseling them. And they came to me wanting me to marry them. And uh, you know, we was going through counseling and the bride asked me, Can my mama give me away? No, she absolutely not. Not if you want me to marry you. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. You got a granddaddy, you got an uncle, you got your who you got a brother. Your, no, your mom we don't we don't just do that at a tradition, okay? We don't just do that out of tradition. God put Eve under the covering of Adam. Woman, you are subject to your husband. Daughter, you are under the covering of your father until he gives you to the covering of your husband. And you ain't got to like God's order. It's not my order. Don't get mad at Elder Underwood because I'm the one that still teaches it or will, will, will live by it. It just is what it is. I'm like Jeremiah today. I'm like Jeremiah today. I'm weeping for God's church. I'm grieving for God's church as a pastor. It hurts my heart to see the things that go on among those who are supposed to be the people of God. It grieves my heart. Lord, have mercy. I had someone tell me who was dealing with a tragedy. And as I was hugging them, they were saying, what is God saying? He's got to be saying something. 
what is God doing? He's got to be doing something because this is too much to bear. It's too hard. And you want to know the thought that came to my mind? You better believe God is talking. You better believe God is sounding the alarm. In church, he is telling us, y'all better get over the foolishness. Y'all better quit misrepresenting me. Y'all better quit just ignoring me until trouble rises in your life. I am not to be trifled with. I am not a plaything. I am not a leprechaun or a genie in a bottle that you can just rub on and make a wish whenever you need me to show up on your behalf. The devil is a liar. I am king. I am Lord. I am ruler. I am God. You wondering why you crying so hard right now? Because I just broke this rod across your back. Beloved, that is our God. I weep like Jeremiah. I weep like Jeremiah today. Jeremiah was encouraging the people. After the city was destroyed, the temple was burnt. The scriptures tell us that he bewailed. He bewailed. In other words, he wept from his heart, his very soul, wept for God's people. The thing is, is that what he wanted to show them, what Jeremiah wanted to show God's people in their understanding, and this is my aim as we walk through this text. One of the things that he wanted to let them know was that even though God can bring us to a destitute situation and even though it can look like the grace of God has seemed to left us even though it may appear that mercy seem to have left us the truth of the matter is his his aim was to let us know that the hope of salvation has still not been cut off that hope still remains it still remains but it remains is what he was letting them know is that this hope comes from a repentant spirit and faith that God will restore. Jeremiah also taught him how to pray in the book of Lamentations. But not just pray, but to pray in faith. The act of prayer itself is an act of faith. Faith that he hears you for one. And not only that he hears you, but faith that he who hears you is also able to do exactly what he said. Beloved, I wonder today. I wonder today. How do you feel about some of the trouble in your life? Have you ever looked back while you were here going through something and wondered, did your actions have anything to do with what you're going through? Has some of my decisions caused this to fall upon me? I have. Absolutely, I have. Has it ever caused you to evaluate yourself? 
to evaluate who you are, to evaluate how you live, to evaluate how you treat people, to evaluate how you represent God. Has it ever done that for you? Absolutely. It has for me. If it hasn't, that might cause one to question. Do you truly know the Lord? Or, 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 or is it that you know him so little? Is it that you know so little about him? Because you still, you know, you still got this uh, made up figure of who God is in your mind. Oh, God is just everything lovely and merciful and grace, and he's just so beautiful. God, there's no God. God would never allow such tragedy. Where, 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 where is that God? So Somebody show me that God in the scripture. Somebody show me that God. I, I don't find that God. That's only one aspect, one element of my God. God is also a God of judgment. He's also a God of wrath. Huh? Don't get my God twisted. I need you to get to know who your God is. We, we've got to know how he deals with us on a practical level. On a practical level. Some things... God takes us through as trials of our faith. Some things God takes us through to increase us spiritually, to increase our faith. The maturation process, the sanctification process. But also, some things we go through is by way of chastisement. Does the Lord not say, if I don't chastise you, those whom I never chasten are bastards. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. That's what he says. He says, if I whoop you because you belong to me. You belong now. I have to chasten you sometime. Otherwise, I'm just letting you get away with murder. And that wouldn't make me a good father, wouldn't it? You better believe. We've got to understand how God deals with us. It's always a purpose for your pain. It's always a purpose behind your circumstances. It's always a purpose behind your trouble, your suffering, your anguish, your depression. Your disappointment. We are the children of God. If you don't belong to God, then I'm not talking to you. Okay? I'm not talking to you if you ain't one of his. If you ain't been truly born again. I ain't say if you ain't been baptized. I said if you ain't been truly born again. Then this series, my beloved brother or sister, is not for you. This series is for the child of God who has been struggling with trying to understand why maybe some things happen in their lives and you don't fully understand why God deals with his people the way he deals with his people. Beloved, God has just caused because God expects more out of us. He don't expect you to live like the heathen. He don't expect your household to be in a disarray and be out of order. Why? Because he's done too much for you, for you to, for him to leave you in that mess. He cares too much for you. We, we, we want to assume that because we're in some, 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 some suffering type of circumstance or situation, we want to assume that God does not care. Well, my beloved brother or sister, it is quite the opposite. The reason you're in some trouble, the reason you're suffering is because he cares. It's because he refuses to leave you where he found you. It's because he refuses to leave you to your reprobate self. You better be glad that he whoops your behind. 
You better be glad that he causes you to fall on your face sometime. You better be glad that he takes some things from you. Because some of you will allow things to rule your decision. Some of you will cause things to become your God. Like your money. Like your car. Like your house. Like your job. Like that woman. And you know what God will do? Because my God is a jealous God. Is he will come in and he will just cut it straight out of your life. I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. I'm like Jeremiah tonight. I grieve over the household of faith. We're so broken. We're so divided. Denominationalism. Spewing so much idiocy, falsehoods. How you gonna make somebody worship a certain way? The last I checked, those that worship God worship Him in spirit and in truth. There ain't no right way to worship. There ain't no right way to praise. It's however which way the Spirit leads you. But we got all these denominations out here. Want to tell people you do it that way, you do it this way. Oh, you can be meek. You got to be. You should be meek and mild. They don't take all of that. Who, who said? Who are you? It's foolishness. It, 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 it's so fool. It, it looks so. If I was on the outside, I, 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 if I was still in my reprobate mind, still lost still of a worldly carnal mindset and i was looking at the church you want to know what i would say i would say exactly what they say about us today those people are fools that's what i would say they're fools they're hypocrites that's what i would say why why would i not say that what else have we shown them? What else have we shown them? You got the biggest denomination under the Christian umbrella, the Catholic Church, who practice this celibacy among their preachers and pastors. And then what gets exposed? molestation why because celibacy is not a natural gift that's why Paul said that elders preachers pastors bishops be the husband of one wife Paul didn't teach us no celibacy but where did they get that but how does that make the church look Hmm? I hurt for the church of God. That's why whatever, whatever God is doing with us in this season, God is justified. All I pray, all I pray for, what I pray for is that the casualties, the casualties are low. Just like Jeremiah in Jeremiah 27 when he went and he was pleading with the people, submit. Submit so the bloodshed can stop. Submit so the destruction can stop. Church of God tonight, submit. So the bloodshed can stop. So the destruction can stop. So then the healing can take place. The restoration can take place. I grieve for the church of God. I grieve for it. It's about God's people. It's about God's people. And, and I mean, I, I, I need us to understand that just because we live now under the dispensation of grace, 
it does not give us the liberty to continue to live like heathens. It does not give us that liberty. You can try it if you want to, but it does not. The Lord will, if you belong to God and you continue to live like that, the Lord will show up. Hello, somebody. The Lord will show up. And when he shows up, oh, he's going to make himself known. He's going to make himself known. Because when God show up, he ain't show up. He didn't come to play. He didn't come to play. He didn't come to be soft. He didn't come to spare you of your feelings. He's come, he came to let it be known. I am God. What did he say? If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. People of God. That's where we are. Order. Order is necessary. The preservation of the authority of the scriptures is necessary. In other words, when I say that, the preservation of the authority of the scriptures is that it is true, that it is infallible, and that it is the inspired written word of God. That's what I mean. The integrity of it. Don't take nothing away. Don't add anything to it. It's all truth. Can we do that? If we can do that, I believe things will turn around. My thing is, like I told you at the beginning, as far as playing my part, is to knock down walls, tell people the truth about God. The truth about their salvation. The truth about what God requires. And see what God will do with his church. Meet me again next Wednesday. We're going to come back and we're going to get into chapter one of the book of Lamentations. If you get an opportunity between now and then, I, I, I encourage you to read the entire book in your own time. It's only about five chapters. It's, a, it's an easy read. It's an easy read. I encourage you to read the book of Lamentations. Read the book of Lamentations. It's an easy read. <clears throat> Shouldn't take you too long. You can read it in one sitting. Um, but that will at least give you a platform, a foundation, as we walk through this series of study. I love you with the love of Jesus. <clears throat> As I stated earlier, continue to be in prayer with the Mosley, Sanford family, Johnson family. Be in prayer for them and the passing of Laurel Anthony Washington and in the passing of Jackie Sanford. And then also be in prayer <clears throat> with the Carter family, Stevenson family in the passing of Boo Carter's son from this morning. Pray for them. Pray for, continue to pray for our nation, continue to pray for our children, our community, our schools, and heard that the governor didn't, um, he didn't reinstate the mask mandate. Um, I encourage you to continue to wear your masks Continue to be safe. 
The pandemic is not over. I want to encourage you also to go get vaccinated. I myself, I plan on going this weekend to get mine done. Like some of you, I was skeptical. But please, ma'am, please, sir, go and get that done so we can be on the, on the right track towards getting back to some level of normalcy. But I love you with the love of Jesus. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Go in the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you.